So what now? What? So what? I have ALS. Now what am I going to do about it? Okay. And so what that means to you, I'm going to do whatever it takes to get out there, keep myself strong. You owe it to your coaches, to your family, to your soldiers, anyone that has ever given time and dedication to you, you owe it to them. That's right, to fight. We met at West Point. I was a basketball player. He was a football player. Kind of wasn't cool to date female cadets, but he didn't care. He dated me anyway. And we got, oh, thanks. I looked good. So that's really nice. When you go through hardship training militarily together, you kind of understand where his headspace was and how hard he worked. We started to have our families, our kids right away. We made a good foundation. Yeah. Good partnership, you know, good teammates. After 26 years in the army, we were just like, hey, let's go figure out what the civilian world has in store for us. And yeah. put your name out there, you got this fantastic job, and we bought a house, and it was really exciting. And then the floor yeah. fell out from underneath us when we with the diagnosis six months later for yeah. ALS. Growing up, I know like the ice bucket challenge and everything, but that was the first time I was able to put like a face to the condition. ALS stands for amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. It affects the muscular system distally to centrally. Early symptoms of ALS include uh, muscle twitching, muscle stiffness. You may have to learn how to walk again, talk again. Basic day-to-day -day activities are hard for you to accomplish. But, you know, they're still coherent, they're still with it. And then over time, it just kind of slowly affects all parts of your body, and then lastly, your breathing. An ALS patient will live two to five years is what the typical diagnosis is. And Chuck, Chuck's on year number six because of physical therapy. Someone early on said, this is going to be really difficult. If there's anything you can do for him as his spouse, as his partner in crime, keep him moving. <laughs> we just keep moving. We just keep moving. I was his evaluating physical therapist, and I definitely treated him along the way. But I did have PTA staff that helped with that, too. I treated Chuck very closely. We did exercises depending on how he felt for the day. We worked on a lot of stretching. Right, just to keep the muscles elongated there because, you know, as you start to lose use and function, you can kind of tighten up and you want to keep those muscles at a certain length. Cardio, endurance, and just strength training and then just working some functional aspects as well. We did a little dry needling with him, which was kind of cool. He has muscle spasms and fasciculations, which is common with um, ALS, especially as the muscles aren't moving as much as they used to be. <laughs> Dry needling was really, was really beneficial. Uh, they really out, thought outside the box. Keeping him strong and not seeing him decline and keeping him safe and still getting him to do certain things maybe in a different way was a success. Chuck is an army ranger. He is a tough guy. He's funny and he's blunt. <laughs> <laughs> the way he carries himself and his mental aspect about things is, is wonderful. If it was just like slow or I was tired and didn't get enough sleep, I knew like two o'clock I, it would just like turn the day around. Halloween, he showed up in a Superman costume, hopping out of his van with his cape flying in the wind and smiling. His comments that he made, you know, might have been borderline sometimes. You know, we won't talk about that, but I mean, boy, would it make you laugh. He really uplifted not only employees, but patients as well. He wanted to know why they were there and what they were struggling with, even though he was struggling himself. He doesn't let the fact that he has ALS show or affect him. Just as much as he could tell me about the karaoke bar, he also felt comfortable talking about knowing that pulmonary issues and breathing issues would probably be the last straw for him and, and how to navigate that. You can only control the controllables. And each and every day, Chuck believes his job is to get up and put a smile on his face and just to keep moving forward. So with this 5K and fundraiser, we are trying to bring awareness to ALS, but also provide a donation to a specific organization that Chuck and Stacy have chosen. You picked I am ALS. Currently, they've really proven to be the most like cohesive and groundbreaking group right now for us. Brian Wallach, who has ALS, he really has a finger on the pulse of what 
what needs to be done to cut through all the red tape. Whenever you have a rare disease, there's so much red tape to try to fight to get therapies and drugs, and they really are doing wonderful things. And having a company that'll host something to raise money for a foundation of choice from a patient is really cool, and I just love Chuck's choice of foundation. So I'm hoping that we raise a lot of money and can help with research to hopefully find at least treatment, if not a cure. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. What you guys are doing for all of your patients, each and every one of you, from the front desk staff to the doctors of physical therapy to the physical therapists, you guys have a tremendous impact on people's lives and we really appreciate what you do. We believe it. this ALS, this journey that we're on, it's a freight train. What we also like to say is <laughs> not today, <laughs> mother freakers, not today. And the reason why is because as long as we have battle buddies and as long as we have people like core physical therapy on our side, we can do anything. Not today. No, no way. It's not gonna take us today.